Um, noise and air pollution are a big problem. Uh, the average oil and gas well requires anywhere from 320 to 1,365 truckloads of equipment to bring a well into production. Again, depends on how far down the well is, how much material is already on site or nearby, uh, but it can take a lot of these trucks to bring in. You think about cement trucks, how many cement trucks is it going to take to fill one of, you know, down to the bottom of one of these wells? It takes a lot. Uh, water has to be brought in. Um, uh, typically, the water is not from on site. You have to go off site to get it. They don't typically drill a well and then pump directly, you know, pull the water out and put it down the well. They're bringing it in from somewhere else. Air pollution is typically from the trucks. They're diesel and uh, they put a lot of, of fumes into the air. Um, carbon dioxide and methane from the flame outs. And then the smell from the extraction. Typically, there's a lot of sulfur in black shales and you'll get a lot of that rotten egg smell as, uh, while they're developing the well. Once it's capped and they're, and they're pumping, you typically do not, the, the, uh, the natural gas itself, itself is not, uh, it's uh, odorless, um, but it's just some of the material as you're bringing up the, uh, the first material after the frack that you get the sulfur smell in the air. Um, in some places, they, they're too, you know, you get the natural gas, what do you do with it, right? Uh, you get it, you've got to somehow get it to the people that need it. Um, and in some areas, the way that they're going to do that is through pipelines. And so if you have to put a pipeline from one of these uh, pad sites, then that's an additional um, construction issue um, and potentially uh, destruction of, of forests and so forth as they put the pipe in. Um, typically, they want to put these underground, not on the surface. So that means they've got to dig, they've got a, a scar, basically. And typically, they want to keep that cleared out so you, they don't let the trees grow back. All right. Um, so the, uh, I, this one's from the Millennium Pipeline, which is um, in New York, New York State. So as they start to develop wells in Pennsylvania, they'll need to put in pipelines or come up with some other way to get the uh, natural gas off-site to where they, it needs to be. All right. So that means trucks, or that means pipes. One of the biggest problems is that they need three to five million gallons of water uh, to develop a well. Right. During the actual drilling process, you can't, the drill doesn't just go down there. You, you send water down with the drill, and uh, the water actually is under high pressure, so it pulls uh, the rock pieces up. So as it's drilling down through, uh, it's crushing rock material, and then that floats up in the water and comes out. And that get, gets pulled out and put into a holding pond. Um, then once the, drill, the entire system has been put in, um, then you have to put the uh, fracking fluids down, which is over 90% water. And the fracking fluids don't stay down there, right? They go down, but then it helps bring up the uh, gas so that it comes back out. So you have uh, water with uh, fracking fluid in it, okay? So remember, it's 0.5% of all of, of the material that's pumped down is this fracking fluid. That's 0.5% of three to five million gallons. That's a lot, okay? So um, when they say, oh, there's not that much, it's only 0.5%. It's 0.5% of three to five million gallons, so that's quite a bit. Um, and then that has to be put into retention ponds. So I just wanted to show you what happens. Now, there's two ways to get the water for this. One is to, to um, use underground water sources, OK? So that means pumping water um, from somewhere. And if you do that, uh, these are typical wells in the ground. Here's the water table. So this is all the water underneath the ground. Um, and if you typically, anytime you have a, a well um, for water or oil or whatnot, it, as you're starting to pull it out of the ground, you create what they call a, a cone of depression. And um, that means that the water is being pulled down to the, uh, the head of the well and then it's pulled up to the surface. Now, uh, typically a normal home does not create a large cone of depression, um, unless you have teenagers um, showering. I don't know. <laughs> then you might have more. Um, but uh, uh, for something like irrigation, you can create quite a large cone of depression because they're pulling a lot of water out of the ground short periods of time. And uh, it, it actually pulls the uh, water table down. You could actually cause uh, wells to go dry in the neighborhood. Okay. Um, so this is one of the things. If they're getting the water for this fracking um, process from groundwater sources, this could be a problem because it can pull the whole water table down in the neighborhood. All right, which can affect a lot of these areas and are in places where um, groundwater uh, is the main source of water for people's homes. Okay, so there's a problem with that. There's a problem with if you're taking it out of the ground, you can actually dry up wetlands, streams, and lakes. 
all right, because they pull the water table down below those and it can actually pull the water out of there. Um, typically though, they don't like to use this type of, um, of water source because it actually costs money to pump it out of the ground. Um, and so they typically like to take the water out of streams or ponds or lakes. So they'll go and uh, pull it out, uh, put it into trucks and then truck it into the site. Um, now they do get permission and permits from the uh, local towns to do this and they usually pay for the water by the gallon and so forth. So, um, uh, but again, if you're taking too much out of a stream, you can dry the stream out downstream. Um, you can dry out wetlands again and so forth. So there are all sorts of issues um, with just too much water taken away from the system because they're taking the water from one place and they're taking it to another place. And then eventually they're saying, oh, it's going back into the ground, but it's going back to the ground in a different place, which means that the, where it came from does not necessarily get the water back, at least not quickly. All right, it may get it back eventually, depending on the site. 